Hey guys, welcome back to Complete Commando. Today we're going to be talking about the four commando tests. Which one was the hardest? Which one was mentally the most sapping, physically the most sapping? And what are the hardest things about the tests in general? The first test is on the Saturday, that's the endurance course. It's six miles in total, two miles of tunnels and uh, wading through streams and quite arduous terrain, followed by a shooting test at the end. The second test is normally conducted on a Monday. Uh, it's a nine mile speed march at 10 minute mile pace. So you have 21 pounds on a rifle and this is done as a troop. You have to stay in step. If you fall away from the troop or lose the pace in at any point, you'll be pulled off. On the Tuesday then, the next day is the Tarzan assault course. This is an, uh, an assault course that's done 30 foot in the air. And on top of that, you're also doing the bottom field assault course at the end of it. And this leads us to the Wednesday, which is the fourth test and the most Famous test, which is the 30 miler. Uh, this is done with kit in, in your sections um, over Dartmoor. So the first test, the endurance test, you set off normally in, in threes, um, and the, the fastest in the troop go first, uh, followed, you know, obviously by those who aren't as quick uh, by the end. So it's a best effort back to base. You have to help uh, your two other mates through the sheep dip first, and then from there it's best effort back to base. It's two miles of uh, tunnels and uh, going through like uh, underwater and everything like that. You've probably seen the adverts of it. Uh, quite arduous terrain. And then it's four miles from there, best effort back to base. You've got 21 pounds and a rifle and obviously the added water weight as well from going through the sheep dip. Uh, it's all in your shoes and everything like that. When you get back to base, you, uh, you conduct a shooting test, which is done with 10 shots and you have to get seven on target. Uh, I think, if memory serves me correctly. However, if you're getting seven, they ain't going to be too happy with you. Uh, the reason you do the shooting test at the end is obviously because you've gone through all that, the tunnels and everything. You have to have maintained your, uh, your rifle. It's no good your rifle being absolutely caked in mud um, in, in not only on this test but in operations because then obviously that, that weapon's been taken away. So you have to learn how to look after your rifle through, through these tests. All right, so then you get the Sunday off, and then the Monday, you're back in with a nine-mile speed march. This is done with 21 pounds on a rifle as a, as a troop. Uh, pretty cheeky. I actually found this quite hard because I'm a bit of a midget, and so you're obviously having to stay in step with those lads who are sort of 6'3", six, 6'4", six, um, and it's quite a, a monotonous pace. You can't go super fast or super slow. It's a 10-minute mile pace. Uh, you just got to crack on with it. I think this is mentally quite a tough test, because uh, of the, it's an hour and a half of just, you're basically running, then you're walking up the hills, obviously, obviously your weapon and your kit. You're still quite fatigued from the uh, endurance test. However, this is week 31 of training. So by now you're just hardened to it and uh, you're just broken anyway. I think that's the one thing to remember is that when you get to these tests, which is at the end of training, you're already absolutely broken from Royal Marines training. So you're not going to them fresh. You're hanging out already. You've got loads of injuries, mentally just broken down, physically broken down. You've just got to crack on. Tuesday then, so that's the Tarzan assault course. That's 30 foot in the air. You've got 13 minutes to complete this. You've got loads of obstacles, 30 foot in the air. Once you've gone through them, it's then uh, you then run to the bottom field and you conduct the assault course that you do for, for a bottom field pass out and you finish climbing a 30 foot wall. This is just max effort, grizz it out, no nonsense, no messing about, just just absolutely go for it. Obviously with the, the with all these tests, there's time limits. However, if you're scraping by them, the instructors aren't gonna be happy with that. This again is conducted with 21 pounds and a rifle. Again, you're fatigued from the two tests before it. And a, this is just literally grizz it out, no nonsense. This for me was my favorite test because I like just 10, 15 minutes of absolute thrashing yourself and just getting it done and and you knew that you know this is going to be uh, what 10 11 minutes of hard work but once it's done it's done whereas the others dragged out for a lot longer and then the next day the final test is the 30 miler over Dartmoor this is pretty cheeky you go and stay over in Dartmoor you're in your sections so I think we were in sort of eight man sections at this point maybe even a bit less because a lot of people had left and um, yeah you just just literally 30 miles, you've got an eight hour cutoff. 
you're over like, absolutely honking terrain. You got your kit weighs about 40 pounds for, for this test. And like I say, you're super fatigued from the other three tests. Um, terrain's horrific. They make you eat these like pies that are absolutely gopping. They're like freaking frozen. Uh, the last thing you want to do is scran a massive pie, but you, you have to do it uh, so that they know you've got enough calories in you. And then you're just trying to stuff your face with like jelly babies the whole time. But th this is the this is obviously a, a cheeky test, you know. Anything in that range will always be cheeky. But because uh, it's the final test, you get presented your green beret after this test. So I know lads who who have broken their ankles and had horrific injuries who have just cracked on through this because mentally they're like, this is the last test. No matter what, I'm getting my green beret. Uh, obviously, lads fail this test. Uh, people go down with quite severe injuries like heat stroke and, and all sorts because um, you want that beret so badly. For me, this was the hardest test, 30 miles, uh, eight hours of work, um, and you are obviously broken from the days before it, but no matter what, even if they'd extended it to 10 miles on that finish line, you're gonna complete it, you don't care. You just, you, you know this is what you want. Where it used to finish was over a bridge and like you get everyone clap you in everything like that. They've changed the route a little bit now, so I don't think you finish on the bridge. You still get clapped in and it's a proper emotional time because you've done, what, nine months minimum unless you've been injured and, and that, you know, you've done far longer. Um, hardest, longest training. And then you finish with this. It's uh, quite an emotional moment and obviously you get the title of Royal Marines Commando there and then. Sounds crazy to say this. It isn't the hardest week in training because you get relatively left alone. You do lectures and stuff uh between the tests, but you get you know you get treated relatively well because you're in your commando test. Whereas other weeks, you, you're just getting fresh. You're never left alone. The mental battle of like your your room isn't safe. They can come in at any moment, trash your locker, thrash you for hours, bottom field, pee wet through, cold, all that junk just amalgamated. Um, this week you get good sleep. You get relatively left left alone unless you you know, mug the training team off or whatever. So I actually found this week quite an enjoyable week. The, the tests are obviously hard, but nowhere near for me the hardest week in training. Uh, others might say differently, but uh, yeah, that de definitely uh, quite an enjoyable week overall. And the thing is as well, it's the last, it's pretty much the last week of training. The week after that is King Squad, so it's just tons of drill. You're obviously broken from the commando test, but you know, you've passed it, that mental pressure's off you, the physical pressure's off you, now it's just preparing for uh, for pass out. So all your drill for like a week, you're doing like drill, eight hours a day, whatever it is, getting ready for the families to come and see you and that. But this week is like the penultimate week, you know, it's the final week of all the junk, all the mental torture. So it's like you're at the home straight, you know, you can get through anything that week. Brings back good memories. Uh, you know, you, you, you're all in it together, one in, all in. Everyone's going through it together. You know, no man's left on himself. And uh, and it, that's where the closeness, that's where the bond of uh, coming together with the, the other lads is. Is, you know, you're all, you're all having to go through this crap together. And that's, um, that's where brothers are made, you know what I mean? And obviously going forward, going on operations and that, it's the fact that you're all doing this together, you know, you're putting your life on the line together. When you go back to home to your civvy lives, you look around, say, the pub or whatever, and, and, you know, no one else has gone through those things with you. But when you're with the lads in the Marines, um, it's just this thing of just, you, you just know you've been through the same stuff together. And that's what bonds you so well. Hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into the commando tests. Uh, I look back now with fond memories at the time. It's obviously absolutely gopping, but uh, so glad I went through it. So don't quit. Just crack on. Cheers, guys.